Hi, this is Sean with MP3 Car. We're here at CES 2011 and we're in the Nokia booth and I'm here with Justin from uh, ICS. And what we've got here is Justin has created a, a demo, an automotive demo, uh, demonstrating QML and uh, based off of the Qt framework. And Justin, if you want to give, just give me a little information of what exactly this demo is and, and why it's attractive here. Sure. This is actually a demonstration of the power of the new QML programming language, which is a declarative language uh, meant for laying out user interfaces. And it has properties and states and transitions built right into it. So it's very easy to do things like here we have a dashboard. And it's actually hooked up to a Mega Square 2 fuel injection system. And this is an engine simulator. And if I change values, you can see things actually move. The needles move smoothly. They have a little bit of bounce at the end. They feel real. This is all just configurations using the standard QML items. So all that kind of animation, that, that physics engine, that's all built into QML. You don't actually have to program that math. Exactly. I just say I want to bounce out, and I get the needles to bounce. Okay. So you'll notice here that I have um, a number of different applets, such as an AM, FM radio, and we have transitions that go between those as well. So we have a serious satellite radio implementation, and even maps. And these maps come from Ovi. Uh, these are very easy to do in, uh, in QML. There's items that come with the um, Qt mobility package for just making a map in your application. Now, Qt supports multi-touch, although this is a multi-touch screen. It's not working here for this demo. Yes. Okay. So uh, to use multi-touch um, on anything that's Linux and Qt, you need the latest and greatest version of the uh, what's called the X server. So uh, newer distributions will have that. Okay. And now these interfaces, they, they look beautiful. And you said you had two people working on this team for two weeks. You made yes. this demo. And he was working in Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. So I wrote all the C++ backends. And uh, one of the guys I worked with, Andrew, he's an artist at ICS. He did all the graphics, whether it is the dashboard or any of the radios, in Photoshop. And then exported directly from Photoshop into QML. And what that means is that every layer in your Photoshop file becomes an individual QML item in your user interface layout. Now, that's not built into Photoshop, right? So Nokia made a plugin for Photoshop? Yes. Okay. You can actually download it from Qt Labs, which is a Nokia website that has some bleeding edge code on it. And it's actually a plugin for Photoshop. OK. And um, this. This technology, QML, has been available for a while now, right? Yes. And, and what are we looking at in the future in terms of uh, where this kind of technology is headed? So right now, um, all of this was built without a widget set. That means there's no uh, concept of a button. I made my own. There's no slider. Uh, there's no switches. Um, everything is either an image item, a text item, or basic primitive rectangle type things. Coming soon in technology preview, probably within the next couple of months, is going to be Qt Components, which is a whole widget set that is directly geared toward writing QML applications so you can use standard buttons, standard sliders, and work even faster. And you'll be able to make your own widgets, of course, right? Exactly. And, and so it'll be really rapid development for any kind of interface apps, you know, especially in the car space like we're talking about here. Now, one issue that we talked about is that, again, these gra I have to mention that the graphics are beautiful here, but they were made specifically for this size screen. Yes. Now, these are SVG graphics, or these are rasterized graphics, right? yes. not SVG. But they could be SVGs. Okay. Uh, one issue with QML right now is that it has um, a, a limited concept of resizing. It has a concept of scaling, but oftentimes, if you scale something from, say, a 3-inch screen to a 7-inch screen, then the user interface rarely makes sense anymore. Right. So, but for some, for our users that yes. are usually on seven-inch screens or maybe eight-inch or, or ten-inch screens, uh, using these kind of interfaces, it, once you know the size, you can you're pretty much set, right? Exactly. Unless you're building apps that need to go mobile. Exactly. Like that, right. Yep. Okay. Well, this is this is some really great technology, and, and I'm looking forward to uh, to getting it up there and seeing what a lot of yep. people can do with this rapid development. Uh, so keep an eye on our website, um, www.ics.com. We'll be posting the source code to this demo real soon, Excellent. so you can check it out yourself and see how we built this application. Great. Really appreciate it, Justin. Thank, Thank you. you.